Derek, when did you know that night was going to be special? I mean, I didn't know it was going to be special at all. I was just going out there to play my way of playing basketball. And uh, we knew that we had some guys down. And um, I was starting. So before the game, I asked Tiz what he want. And he just told me to go out there and play my game. Why do you think you got some, so emotional after the game? Uh, I, th I think it all came from um, just knowing how much hard work I put into my craft put into my body and like I uh, get ready for games but a day but like the night before the game so um, just prepping myself and just knowing one day that if I get the opportunity I'm going to run with it and that was my way of showing that that I was running with any opportunity that I get. One of the things I found so interesting after the game was you said I've never talked so much in my life yeah. on the floor. After being outside of that role for the last few years, yeah. being in that role again, yeah. when everybody's leaning on you, what was that like? I mean, it was cool. Even when I'm on the bench, um, it's still the most I ever talk. Like, um, I'm making sure that I'm always in the guy's ear, the young guys, making sure that Cat don't feel any pressure while he's out there, letting them know that it's only seven games, eight games in, so it's all right that you're missing bunnies right now. We didn't even get to 10 games yet. so. Um, catch a rhythm, get your reps up, and you're fine. You know, just let them know that everything is going to be fine in this long season, really. One of the things that I think a lot of people in Chicago always thought was they loved seeing how well you did over time, and they loved you as a person, but they wondered if you had lost the joy for the game. Yeah. When did you find that joy again? I mean, I always felt like I had joy. People just get it misunderstood. Confidence, opportunity, joy, fun, this and that. Like, and I was just missing opportunity, man. Like, even in New York, I was the third option. Like, I can't, I'm not the type of guy that's gonna go out and, or come to a team and demand 25 shots. No, I'm gonna get a feel for the team and I'm gonna find my place. And in New York and in Cleveland and everywhere else, it just didn't feel right. So coming back here, um, I'm just under a system and a coach that really believe in me and let me, let me play the way that I want to play. Do you ever wonder after all this time what it would have been like had you not gotten hurt uh, with the ACL injury? Nah, I never thought about that, bro. Never thought about it. I mean, um, at the a couple of years I was playing revenge basketball yeah I wanted to prove everyone wrong but after a while I had to let that go and understand the career and the path um, I was heading down and um, I can't play that way when I'm out there I love to be happy I love to try to win every game or compete in every game that I play in and that's when I play the best basketball. To that point You've had a rough couple of years. Yeah. You get traded by uh, your hometown team in Chicago. Yeah. Uh, you have the injuries that you're going through. Yeah. Uh, you go to a couple different other places. You get yeah. waived by the Jazz. You've got the court case that you're in yeah. and out of court. After everything has happened, what was the lowest point for you? Um, the lowest point, I would say um, the last time in Cleveland when um, I got taken out of the air and um, I thought my career was over. Like I thought, like I wasn't able to run for a month and a half. Um, I didn't know what was going on with my ankle, and I was just trying to figure things out. And um, around that time, I, I found myself, me and my guy Art, in the gym at three or four o'clock in the morning, shooting shots, and then, and I had to like realize, like, man, I really do love the game. If I'm in the gym, like I'm supposed, I ain't supposed to be in the gym at that time. But I was just, I found my way, or found myself always, like, around basketball in the gym because it was my safe haven. So um, that's, like, in, in Cleveland, that's when I realized that I still had joy for the game, and the game was still somewhere in me. You walked away from the game a couple times. Yeah. Uh, was... As you went through what was going on emotionally in your head, was there ever a point where you thought about retiring? No, nah, um, I always say like, um, I quit a couple of times, but I never gave up. Like, that's something that I never did. I never gave up or I never threw in the towel. 
and it, it plays a role into like the character that I have or the character that I build for myself. Like I know how much I love the game. I have my son, I have my daughter now, and I never want them to look back and see that I gave up. So with me having my kids, I feel like they played a, a huge role in me, especially coming back and me like pushing through everything right now, like being 30, going through five surgeries, four surgeries, an eye surgery with five surgeries total, and just understanding where I'm at in my career and knowing that I still have a lot, but I don't, want, I don't like speaking about it anymore. I just want to let my game speak for itself. Is that one of the legacies that you want to leave, that you were able to make your way through all these different injuries and still play at, at this kind of level? Yeah, yeah, I'm making history right now. Like, every time I touch the court, it's history. Well, that's how I feel about it. Like, and I feel like my fans and the people that watch, they can relate in some way. I mean, the people that really care about me, you have people that talk sh here and there, but they're the ones that, that's following my story and the ones that's writing about my story. So who cares what they say? They just got to keep watching and keep writing. In the midst of all of this, as you know, in a couple of weeks, uh, there's the appeal for the, the case. Yeah. Uh, how do you balance all the happiness that you're having on the floor right now compared to everything that you're dealing with off of it? It's all about just having a team. I have a team. I don't have to appear in court. I have a team set up where my, my best friends are going on my behalf and I'm able to focus on the season. So I don't have to worry about that. Um, I wish her nothing but the best. I hope that she's happy. But other than that, I'm focusing on basketball and where I'm at. I'm being mindful of where I'm at right now in my career. For as long as I've known you, you've always said you don't need validation from anybody. No. Does it bother you at all that there are people out there uh, who will never be able to cheer for you again because of what came out in the case? Yeah, but teach his own. That's how I feel about it. Um, everybody's not going to like me. Everybody's not going to love the way I play. Everybody's not going to like the, this, every decision that I make. And I know that <clears throat> through life, period, where um, uh, I'm old, I'm 30, and I'm not that emotional kid anymore. Like, I'm a grown ass man. In the midst of everything else that's going on, there's been a lot of changes with the Timberwolves. Yeah. Uh, and with, uh, with Jimmy and, and the demands that he's made. Yes. As uh, a member of the team, what's it been like for you guys dealing with trying to play games while there's all this other stuff going on? You know, with everything that I've been in my career, on the court, off the court, I kind of stay out of it, bro. Like, if I'm not a part of it, I'm staying out the way. Like, that's how I feel about it. When Jimmy's around, we treat him as if he's a part of the team, um, nothing less. And uh, we, of course, everybody knows that we want him on the team. So um, he feels the love. It's just that he has to make the decision on his own. And I think everybody that's on the team respect that. You've known him a long, long time since yeah. he's come in the league. Do you think there's a chance that he would stay long term here in Minneapolis? I mean, who knows, man? I, I want him to stay. I know that my teammates want him to stay. The team want him to stay. But um, he's a grown man. Um, he has to make the best decision not only for himself but for his family and his career. So, um, like I said, with me being in my position and everything that I went through, I wish him nothing but the best, and I think that he could feel that too. As far as the 50-point game goes, yes. why do you think what you did resonated with so many guys throughout the league? Um, everybody go through adversity in their life. And um, at some point, especially at some point in their career, and um, it's all about how you take on that adversity. And I feel like I'm mentally tough, and I know that I work on my craft. and. I know it's part of everyone else's life or everybody in this this world, basketball world, or in the media to write stories. Like, all this is out of my control. Like, it kills me when people try to predict my career when they can't even predict the weather. So how the f*** are you going to tell me what, to, what my career is going to be when you can't tell me if it's going to snow or rain tomorrow? Makes no sense to me. As, as you go through the rest of this season, 
Uh, I was talking to Kevin Durant, and he said that one of the things he hopes is that this is a new beginning for you. Yes. What are your expectations for yourself moving forward now? Um, like I said, just to win six man of the year and to help the young guys um, mature, um, grow, and see how, how far this team can go. We touched on it, and we'll end on this one. As far as your basketball legacy goes, yeah. what would you like it to be? Oh, I, um, just simple that, that I was a dog.